welcome back to our video series of how to build an inclusive, fun and high performing workplace. Today we're going to talk about what's the difference between personality types and cultural differences and how can we use both so we get that inclusive, fun and high performing workplace. <laughs> and then later on in the series, we will also cover how empathy and remote working are linked. What leadership skills do you need for good remote working? Um, how you can adapt a play mindset at work and what's the value of a play mindset? And also how to be agile in an in ever-changing new normality. I'm Eva Tarabishi and as an intercultural consultant, trainer and ICF certified coach, I support my clients to achieve worldwide success. I'm Naili Makangu. I'm the Mary Poppins of Business, also known as the founder of Athena Leaders, a management and leadership consultancy that sweep away your challenges and leave a legacy behind of a happy, high-performing team. Thank you, Naili. And let's jump right in, right? Um, you do a lot of work on personality types uh, with your clients, and I would just love to hear more about that. How do you use the personality types and what are they actually? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I thought we'd never come to this topic, even though if this is only the second in the series. I'm really, really passionate about personality mm -hmm. types. And in fact, I'm an authorized partner of Editing Disc and a certified practitioner of, uh, of Disc. As such, for me, uh, personality type is something that I really, I, I really love and I really lo love talking to other people. But I think for me, it's uh, not just about others, really, about how to help other companies. For me, the, the reason why I'm so passionate is because of my own journey and how personality types have really changed my own concept. I remember back in 20, 2013, I had my profile done by one of my now mentors that looked at it and it was like, oh, my God. I will never want to work, work for you. So what is it that he saw in my profile, the combination of the energies that I have that make him go like, oh my God, that can be a, a, a ticking bomb in the future. And for me, that feedback was, uh, obviously there was a lot of other positive things, but as you know, we always dive on that one set, that one line. And that's really drove me to invest so much into understanding personality types and profiling, everything from Miles Brings to DISC and to everything that's out there, to then later in about, I think it was 20, towards the end of 2017, the same person came back to me and says, hey, do you want to collaborate with me? And oh. I was like, oh, that's a oh. hell of a change. And um, so that's really the story I bring to my clients when people say, I cannot be a leader because of this is my type. I cannot be, I cannot mm -hmm. do X, Y, Z because of my type and energy. Now, the question is, what is personality types and uh, what it is all about? Yes. To help you understand it, I brought some reinforcement here. So I've oh, got yay, my, my guys. <laughs> yes, I've got an entire team to be able to talk about personality types. Now, there's been a lot of work done by many psychology, uh, psychologists, uh, William Astor, Carl Jung, and so many more. And mm -hmm. as you know, there are many profiles out there. But essentially, yes. what they look at is how people communicate, relate to, uh, communicate or think, think. So do you get, how do you process information? And mm -hmm. how, do you see, how do you see or perceive the world? The different energy types, so are you introverted or extroverted, which affects, you know, how you, how you communicate with others, well, more, more importantly, how you reuse your energy. Mm -hmm. For example, there's this misconception that all everybody that's introverted are also shy. Like, no, you can't find shy extroverted, it's completely different. And then you get the, the second aspect of things is, are you action oriented or are you relationship oriented? You get people who, of course, you also care about relationships, but you are so focused on the task. And, mm -hmm. and again, it can be a great attribute, but if you're not aware of your personality types, then it could be a cause for concern in teams. So when we look at those two spectrums, so one is the introversion and extroversion, and obviously everybody in between, and the next, well, the next axis is the action-oriented, the relationship-oriented, and everything in between, you end up with a quadrant of four main energy types. Now, I will go through them very quickly, just to give you, give you a bit of a flavor. If you want yeah. more after that, make sure you subscribe to find out more about more videos and check the show notes as well, where we will put more information on that. The first one we will look at are people who are 
on the action, the relationship oriented side, and they are also action oriented. What mm -hmm. I love about people with this energy is that they, they are great, especially in terms of crisis or when you don't really know what you need to do. They have a vision and a focus and they really, really go for that. And it doesn't matter. They can be a bit optimistic uh, as well, but it doesn't matter what's going on. They, are, they can come up with um, ideas very, very quickly. So if you are ever stuck and you need someone to come in there and get the people going and to work towards a particular out outcome, then those are the people to look for. But obviously, with every May single- May I ask something? Sorry. <laughs> Is that a coincidence that you're dressed in red? Because what you just <laughs> described, I know you a bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is not a, a coincidence. In fact, I, uh, red is one of my favorite colors. And I just thought, oh, wow, that, that works really well. And today when I was talking about personality types, I thought I had to treat myself. And today is not chocolate, but it's actually wearing a red top. So this is actually your main profile as well? Yes, exactly. So it's my, one of my main energy, energy type as well. Okay. So, but I'm the, sorry, I interrupted you. You were about to, I think, present the other other side of the red personality type, right? Exactly. And when, when, you're, when you are not self-aware and you might not know, especially on a really difficult day and you got the nerves coming on, people with these personality types tend to focus so much on tasks that you might disregard how other people are, think, are feeling. You know, mm. oh, you need to finish this task. Well, it's, it's five o'clock. Okay, you're not going to go home until, you know, <laughs> tomorrow or whatever. Or the focus is really on getting things done that you might not pay attention to the emotional well-being of the team. So that's mm -hmm. something that I always recommend people with this time to really move, kind of open up rather than just having a laser focus, kind of open it up a little bit so that you can start building a relationship with people around you. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the, this style is usually called dominance in DISC. Mm -hmm. Next one that we look at, they are also on the relationship oriented, uh, um, the, the relationship oriented, kind of extroverted but relationship oriented style are the yellows. Now, what I love about this, this, this style is that they are very inspiring. You know, when they come mm -hmm. in the room, you know that they're there. They're great at getting people around. And in fact, I found a leader that came into a company and every day in the morning gives high fives to people. And uh, <laughs> I for me, I was like, why? You know, I want to come in and start working. And he comes in and starts giving high fives. But it brings in that energy and that the people who bring the coffee, the cakes, and a bit of chit chat. Mm -hmm. Especially right now with what's going on and people are working from home, sometimes you want to have a little bit of humor or you're not sure what to do to get the team together. Then mm -hmm. those people are really good at generating ideas as well, very optimistic and inspiring and people follow them. So mm -hmm. try to kind of use them a little bit more within your team as well. The yes. downside, they do have a tendency to talk a lot. So if this is your style, kind of watch out as well. If are you making, creating enough space for other people to talk and give their opinion? And also because you're always really excitable, do you follow through on what you need to do? Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and those are called the uh, influence in, um, in the disc side. The next time we are going to look at are people who are on the relationship oriented and also introverted. Now, mm -hmm. once we get to this, uh, this group, this area of the axis, the, they slow down a little bit. So they are not always on the go, as you will see with the first two that we looked at. But mm -hmm. what I love about them is that they, for them is, is, you know, whereas for the yellow, the relationship is about doing things together. For the people who are green, it's about people being okay and genuinely okay mm -hmm. within the organization. Mm -hmm. And so they really care deeply about everybody's point of view. So whenever there's a discussion, they are good mediators because then they can kind of try and find a common ground for people as well. They are good for support. They are good, especially in crisis again, if you are not sure you want to introduce a new change, People with the mm -hmm. green aspect might not always be keen on change, but they will also be the good people to know what James and John and other people in the organization are thinking because they are really great listeners as well. So that's really good, especially when you bring yes. in creating a team and you really want to nurture the supporting aspects and the communication within the team as well. Yes. On the downside, if you have this style, because you really value that everybody's okay, and especially if you start moving into management, you might not be comfortable taking decisions that other people mm. might not want. So you might yeah. stall a lot more and people might not see you as decisive or follow through on, your, on what you say. And so that's something that you need to watch out for as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. on the disc st style, um, that's what we call steadiness. 
Mm. And the final one that we look at, they are back into the, the, the axis of action oriented, but they are also introverted. Mm -hmm. And what I love about this style, uh, they are very, very detailed, right? Especially when you put them in a room with full of people like the yellow and the red will come up with 10,000 ideas because for them, they are very idea generator. The blue and the green might not be idea generators, but mm -hmm. the blues can look at, pick an idea, even in a crisis moment and said, hey, hold on. If you change this here, down the line, this could be the impact. Obviously, uh -huh. because it's a crisis moment, you might decide there's nothing that we can do right now, but at least you're aware to go back and change it in the future. Yes. So they yes. ha really have these analytical ideas and processes, and they do give out a lot of details and a lot of information. Um, so it could, could be a bit of a negative sometimes, especially when you, you, you try to move fast and because they can't make a decision until they've seen a lot of details. But uh, definitely, yes. if you really work on a project and you have an idea, I would always say is bring someone with a blue energy with this analytical so that they can flesh it out in more details mm -hmm. and they can also tell you what could go wrong in the future. Yes. So this style is called uh, consciousness, consciousness. In, and that's um, where the disc the then disc. comes from, right? Yeah, from everything is more particular style. as well. Yes. Oh, I learned something <laughs> really interesting here. Thank you, Nile. No and, problem. Um, what I love seeing is when you, when you explain each type, mm. um, there's always so much, again, they bring to the table. Like we said in our last video yeah. about diversity, I think this explains it really well in more detail is that each and every time has their place and has their mm. strength and um, they, they, they bring that to their workplace and yeah. it's about a good manager to know that and to mm. use that well and yeah exactly so if you have to think about them as different energy types right so we mm -hmm. all have that in ourselves so if whenever you get your even your your report you'll see that everybody will have you know x number of percentage of this or of this or of that mm -hmm. one which means that you can still tap into it but you just need yeah. to be aware of what is your predo predominant style as well yeah, yeah, and yeah. how especially the combination um the combination of things is as an example for myself, and the reason why the person told me I will never want to work with you, I had a really strong red mm -hmm. and a really strong blue. So if you mm -hmm. think about that, I like think fast. I like to get in, I like to move fast. Don't tell me a lot of details. You just give me the bullet point. But more importantly, it's about the speed and the impatience. Mm -hmm. Blue is about the detail and the accuracy. I like my work to be detailed and accurate and done at a very high perfection level. So when mm -hmm. you have the two, you actually get a manager or a leader that is um, definitely, you know, action oriented. So whenever I ask you to do something, please do it as quickly as you can. And I've known manager with this style that will send an email at seven o'clock in the morning and come and check you up at 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> because they want it fast. But then if you want it with more detail, so imagine the le level of stress someone has to come to work really fast with, for you uh, with a lot of details and perfection in a short period of time. So, mm. you know, at the, when I was, my report was done at the time, I didn't really think about pressure. that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't really think about that because I was a software engineer. But the <laughs> feedback for me was really important so that when yeah. I started going to management, I learned how can I communicate better mm -hmm. and keep myself in check uh, whenever there's a brainstorming session? How do I make sure that the yellow do not monopolize the conversation? Whenever you have a meeting, you know, some people say meeting without agendas, but how do people who do, are not really good at thinking on the spot, um, will, they will feel out of place, right? So yeah. especially the blue wants to analyze everything. Maybe it's best to send an agenda, give them even 10 minutes to, so that they can do the thinking before, so they can come to the meeting a lot more prepared and have a better conversation and can actually share with people as well. So for me, it's really yeah. where the beauty and the, the love of personality types and when you start seeing the application within a business and how you can move your team as well so that you can make, the, make use of all the energy types types as well yeah yeah I, I love that i love how um it's only a first step to do the assessment and the analysis and then once yeah. you have the report that's actually where you can set action plans and goals in place of okay wh which strengths do i want to build even more but also also which which weakness do i need to manage and exactly. uh, do i need to understand better and and yeah how do I accommodate somebody who is maybe the opposite profile of myself? Yeah. And just yeah. as a question for you, I, do you, do you, have you done your profile before? Or do you know what your type is or what your color is? 
I think looking at myself, it is, it's really <laughs> funny that I'm wearing green because I think that what, that's where my main energy would lie mm. um, in the, in the relationship-oriented <laughs> introverts. Um, and then maybe a bit of yellow. So that yeah. actually shows as well in, in our, our project working together mm. um, that we are so complementary. And yes. I think we've experienced that ourselves. And that's, Definitely. that's where great teams come together when you have all these different energies, but you can accommodate the other one yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah so yeah this is this is something i just said before i'm really passionate about and what i love especially with us working together and one thing i love to to bring to you as well is uh, so when you start looking at people within the team and start looking at personality in the first video we talked a lot about diversity inclusion and culture so mm -hmm. how do would you apply cultural differences and how does it relate to the topic that we're talking about today yeah, that's a that's a good question because there. What can you do to adapt to the situation? And people are like, oh well, you know, this is the way I am. Or especially if they are the people who are causing the conflict and they are not aware of that, they says, well, this is how I am. When I'm angry, I have to shout. I'm like, this is how you are, or this is how you choose to be. Yeah. I think that people sometimes forget that there is a choice and that yes. you can adapt your behavior. Yes. So yes. I love what you said about, yeah. <laughs> and that's where this work on either the, our cultural orientation or our personality type is quite um, similar. Different aspects mm. of any given culture. And if mm. you analyze those aspects, you can suddenly uh, compare the German culture with the British culture, for yeah. example, or any culture so you want to take. Spain. The, actually, an introverted person in Spain will, will always look more extroverted in, in the UK because yeah. Spain as well, they are very close to each other, the way they sit very close to each other, they, you know, they tend to touch people, obviously, you know, respectively. <laughs> and, um, and obviously, and then you, you train the mix, for example, an extroverted person in Japan and an extroverted person in the UK, they will also look very different. So, yeah. but at the same time, it's kind of having an awareness of that and starting especially in the courses I do on my online courses, course on personality types that you can start thinking about, you know, meeting how people are... Uh,